Right. Why this story, Chelsea? Why, why this one? Because I think women have not had opportunities as directors to tell stories in this period on screen, which is nuts when you think about it, because these are some of the most important women of women's stories and of our shared history. Uh, I think I had a real desire to set the record straight with Mary. It's based on a great book by Dr. John Guy. John Guy. Yeah, and one of the cool things about John's book is that he's a forensic historian. You know, he went back into the archives and worked out that Mary had basically been fake newsed by people within her own time. Actually, Cecil, who's played by Guy Pearce in the movie, you know, she'd been portrayed as someone who's too emotional to lead, who's too sexual to be competent, and, you know, that was a big myth. And to try and get that out of the way and go back to the very source in this great book and tell this story of this extraordinary actor, Sir Sharon, and was a driving force behind the film. Completely. Very, very contemporary themes, though, aren't they? Gender politics, fake news. Yeah. Was that becoming more and more apparent as you were making it, or...? You you would have been aware of that right from the word go anyway, but... Yeah, I mean, I think that you say gender politics. I mean, I suppose uh, I've always tried to tell stories about women and particularly women in power, something that interests me as a woman. Um, so I think the world is looking at gender politics and that, to an extent, is a space that I've always been in because that's yeah. part of my identity and part of my humanity. You know, it's a thing I know and understand firsthand. And of course, we stretch our imagination in movies, but we also find ways to tell our own stories. And although I am not a crowned head of Europe, you know, part of my story as a woman who's tried to lead uh, is in this narrative. So yeah, that's, that's part of it, I think. The fake news element, look, fake news is a kind of flashy term. I mean, propaganda and yeah. lies have been part of the identity of politics since the beginning of politics. Completely. You, you mentioned your your wonderful um, leading cast and Margot as as your Elizabeth. You, is it true she was a little bit hesitant when when you first approached her? Or? Margot said no. She actually uh, said yeah, no. She said no. No, she definitely said no. Um, not because she didn't love the script or I think like me, um, but because she felt that this role had been played by so many greats on film before and she didn't have the knowledge of the history. And I wrote to her, but like in the movie, I wrote her a letter. Well was an email, and said, said, look, you're the only person for this part for me. You're the right person to play opposite Saoirse. And the idea of you two together on screen is a wondrous thing. And also, I'm a theatre director and what I do is prepare actors and I know how to prepare you and this is how we'll do it. There is news. Your cousin Mary has returned to rule in Scotland. She is formidable. My dear cousin Elizabeth, I hope we might meet in person, that I might embrace you. But ruling side by side, we must do so in harmony, not through a treaty drafted by men lesser than ourselves. My dear cousin, let our nations cherish each other as we would. Two kingdoms united. You would have me depose the sister monarch. It is either civil war there or civil war here. All I have done is try to unify this land. Do not play into their hands. You would do well to watch your work. Your beauty, your bravery. Now I see there is no cause for envy. But they are trying to usurp my crime. But I will be the woman she is not. Should you murder me, and you murder your queen?